so I like you say you've just seen there um, just left Dan and now um, I've come back over to Stadium Light I'm going to go to the Fans Museum um, and have a little look in there because I've never ever been in there before and it's all there was some football club so I'll have a look I've got a feeling I'm going to have to pee it to get in which if I have then hey, I can remember but if I haven't then brilliant because museums are free <laughs> so I'll have to wait and see that park can't kind of distance to get there at night because there's no parking at the museum and it's uh, obviously full of cars everywhere if you can see I think it's uh, you can't really see it ah there's the metro it's every day I see the metro go over boom so this is the official Sunderland well, it's not official but it's the Sunderland Football Club Museum uh, it's fan all fan based it's all like run by the fans um, and it used to be a train museum in Sunderland, so I used to go there with my mum. I was out there, what, two years ago? Yeah, I'm slowly getting them made good. Uh, they're obviously turning into like, you know, a football museum. Aye. Uh, we are a museum with a licence, so we do have a bar, which isn't open at the ah, moment. Ah, no, it's all right. Uh, I'm driving anyways. Because <laughs> <laughs> at the moment, the music, the bar is our only source of income because we've got no funding. That's what moment. I thought, yeah. That's why I was thinking it would be, obviously, you pay to get in, but... No, that was one of the, the... I mean, the lad who's basically this building is now and who's the connection belongs to, it's all one man's collection. Yeah. He's been collecting for over 40 years and he's had a dream of opening a museum in Sunderland. But that museum had to be free entry to everybody. Yeah. Um, which is one of the reasons when, certainly when Ellis Short was in charge of the club, he didn't want the club involved because he thought the first thing they would do is slap an administration charge. Exactly, out. aye. You know. But we'll, we'll show you, Ellen. We'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, you can just peruse it. Yeah, that's fine. I can take photos, can't I? Oh, yeah. That's fine. <laughs> the jacket. If I remember correctly, belongs to Mick McCarthy. Mick McCarthy, yeah. Yes. But if you look at uh, the trousers. Is it where he slid in his knees? Decanios. Decanios. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> they, are, they, are actually, they are actually the, the trousers. Uh, so, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I used to. I think uh, when it was McCarthy when we went down the championship the first, the first time. Um, and he got us back up and then we went down the season after and that's yeah. when Roy King got us up, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Aye. Yeah. Seat up of the clock stand in Oak Park. Bloody hell. This is what they were. So, uh, yeah. that was it. If you knew Oak Park. No, I never ever went, never ever got rid. The clock stand was the, the stand that ran along the... It was about 1959, 1960. Yeah. I mean, so, bear in mind, the ground was open from 1898. You know, so uh, yeah. All the strips that you've got on display in this room are all match worn and match issued. Aye. They are all the real <laughs> thing. Okay. Uh, and the table you've got is actually the boardroom table out of Rooker Park. Oh, and we used to have them on display. Now um, we've actually got two chairs out of the old Wembley Stadium. Board really? Yeah. yeah. I tell you what, you've done good to get the, get the likes of um, what you've got. Well, like I say, he's been collecting for 40 years. Aye. Um, I mean, from Roker Park closing down and things being sold off, that was in the bus's garage. Right? So, as you can see, you've got, uh, you've got a tracksuit from the... Tracksuit, aye, yeah. 92 Cup final. You've got Bobby Kerr's from 1973. Um, I think that's... The Milk the, Cup, F yeah, I remember I that. <laughs> I think that's David Corner's actual yeah. tracksuit as well. Um, but, like I say, all the shirts. I used to have loads of them signed years ago, like you say, the likes of Arca. I had a couple of his signed years ago. Yeah. 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 So, and the ones behind there as well. The, the, the 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 Thomas Meyer. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Craig. Mark Poom. Unfortunately, it's not with Vic Hallam. Um, during his career, he scored five hat tricks. We've got all five match balls. Three of them are on display. <laughs> this um, come out, obviously, how much match balls have changed now? Uh, uh, the other two are just totally flat. We're kind of getting them blown up. No. So, um, but that's his actual cup final shirt, match worn shirt from 73. And the little badge just in front of it to the yeah. left. 
um, is actually off his blazer from the night time do. I don't know what he's done with the blazer. No. <laughs> he's kept the, he kept yeah, he's the badge. Kept, he's kept the badge for it, yeah. The, the, I mean, that's iconic, the shirt to us son and supporters. But to me... The... What's shit in the one? Who's that from? Who's it from? Bob Stoke. Bob Stoke, I thought, aye. Yeah. Obviously, Bob was in the museum. Yeah. It's actually dry flower display. Is it? Yeah. It's reflecting the history of shipbuilding, the football club, the mine. Aye. You know, the ships on the river. Um, it's in memory of the miners who just died. Then you've got three tracksuit tops from 73. The actual match, including Ian Porterfield. Believe it or not, bit of a story to that one. Um, Michael got a message um, from a chap who, I don't know, he was on business or on holiday in some Russian country, mm -hmm. uh, walking past a junk shop and he saw that line on the window. Honest? And yeah. He contacted Michael and said, You'll never guess what I've just seen, what he told him. He says, Right, get in the shop. Take photographs, I want to see the stitching, I want to see the yeah, pattern, uh, yeah. I want to see the label. And it took six weeks to verify that it was a real thing and it wasn't a forgery. Um, Jesus, so how's it gone over there? Well, the only thing we can guess is that towards his, in his career as a manager, Ian managed over there. Oh, right, right. And we think he might have given that to some local dignitary or something like yeah. that. He basically didn't want it. Yeah. Skipped it or binned it. Give it to a charity shop over there and that's how we got that. The six yellow tops are actually goalkeeper tops belong to Jimmy Montgomery. Oh, the hell. Okay. You look at them now. <laughs> Jimmy never got the Hollywood cap. Um, but he was capped for what was then called the intermediate team. Yeah. yeah which it, because what, what he was very proud of throughout, as his career was going on, once he got stuck to get picked for England in whatever shape yeah. for, he was proud of the England badge, so he's kept the ones with the England badge. So he's got the intermediate one there. Mm -hmm. The one on the bottom, I think in Jimmy's time, I think it was under 21s at the time, whereas now it's under 23s. Yeah. But the other four was not England, but it was actually the, a representative team called the Football League. Uh -huh. uh, so because they didn't have the English badge on, he actually swapped them with the opposition keepers, whereas the England ones he kept. Oh, right, yeah. On. Okay. So you can see the Irish league. Yeah, the Scottish, Scottish yeah. Yeah. So, uh, um, mm, so, so, you, so we medals. medals. The three medals in the blue case are his football league medals from when he played in these games. But if you remember towards the end of his career, before it became the Champions League, because in those days you had the European Cup, which was for the league champions only. Yeah. You had the... He was a good little character. Yeah, he was, he was. <laughs> if you remember the um, beach ball goal? Yes, I was there and I was behind the goal. I've got a photo of, uh, I've got a photo um, on my laptop, uh -huh. uh, of, obviously of them all celebrating. Uh -huh. Well, that's the match shirt. Yeah. That's Darren's boots that he scored the goal with. <laughs> and that's the match ball underneath. That's his ball. Yeah. <laughs> it's a yeah. you haven't got the beach ball as well. We're trying to get that. You're trying to? Yeah, yeah Michael's got some negotiations to get that. Uh, and then just a few Player of the Year awards on the top and one of the players' medals from the 1992 Cup final as well. Paul Bracewell. Yeah, there's a mixture. There's Paul Bracewell, there's Nick's trophy when they won the league three seasons on the bounce. Jesus. And the reason Son and Ladies got the keeper uh, after year three was when these ladies were changing the format of their current Premier League. Yeah. So it was changing the following season with a new trophy. Yeah. So some of the ladies, as the last winners, got to retain the old league trophy. Oh, so they've actually been able to keep it? Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's now, Stacey, it's, it's always now, it's been donated by uh, the ladies' team. So you can see the FA badge. Yeah. 
Women's Premier, Premier League, League National, National Division. Division. I see all the, the famous old names there. Doncaster Bell is you know, one of the great old teams. Yeah. Croydon. Croydon, I was going to say, yeah. aye. Aye, uh, Sunderland, Sunderland. Yeah. And, and then obviously it would have been Sunderland again. They, because they've got to keep the cup, they didn't yeah. have to hand it back, they didn't bother getting it. Exactly, the aye. But we, we, we're going to just check it out to see what title they played under. Because uh-huh. it was a season they played under Sunderland. So you would have come in that way. Yeah. Put your money through the little hatch for the game. Aye. <laughs> And the gate man would have started. started oh, threatened to that's a release it, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, obviously, this would have been a lot tighter. Yeah, yeah. But unlike the current turnstiles, you hear the stories in, in the old days kids, the dad lifted them over, pushed them underneath without paying. Yeah. Whereas now you can. But a couple of trophies as well, we've got. A trophy for that match there. English versus the Republic of Ireland. Under 18. Yeah, played at the stadium. When, what year was that? 2008? Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you pick that up through the way, it was there in the bridge. Yeah, the aye, time. yeah. Oh, God, aye. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, again, you know, try and move on, but watch your toes and your fingers. Aye, ah, yeah, I'll try. Just to get just the weight of it. Jesus, and that was up in the air. Well, that was on the side of the building? In the building, yeah. <laughs> just a history of cup final programmes. He came in and donated these to us. The blue robe is what he wore going into the ring at the Beijing Olympics. Yeah. Obviously represent Great Britain. The shirt. He was he was a guest of honour at the stadium for one. Yeah, of I remember. I I That's remember what that. Presented him with, uh, and he's ordinary boxing robe that he he wore when he went into the ring. What you can't see because of the way it's facing. It. That's it there. But I'm not a hundred percent sir. But what I'm led to believe is we changed from blue to black when the last shipyard closed on the river. Oh, really? That's what I'm led to believe. Uh-huh. So while we were still a shipbuilding town, the blue is the river. The river, because it's in use. And then no more. Yeah. The Tories become an ambassador for... And again, when, it, when you said you've got something and it stands around the edges, we don't mind. Yeah, uh, well, you know, it is it's very, very similar to that. There's... You know, so, History is history, you can't keep everything no. perfect, you know. Some of the stuff we've got is, how shall, shall we say, dense. Out of uh, what you've got there, <laughs> one's missing because we, we took it away last week uh, to put it on the space somewhere else. But they're actually David Beckham, match one. All oh, right. The shirt that was on the bottom mannequin was his match one, one of his match one Man U Champions League shirts. Yes. Yeah. Pair of his boots, match one. And although you can't see what's in there, believe it or not, we've actually got a fan of his artwork from school or college. Really? Seriously, that's what that is. <laughs> really? Yeah. It needs to be displayed a bit better, but uh, that's generally what that is, his little doodles and everything. Yeah. yeah. Again, just more Vox memorabilia. Ah, uh, my dad loves all Vox. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, collection of cups and this, that and the other. And what Frank Nicholson did the day he came down, you know those big So if you're on a match day on a Saturday, if you're coming here at home. I've well, never ever thought of coming here. Uh, you know, I've you never... Come between one and two o'clock with four or five hundred people and standing in the Jesus. In the <laughs> no, don't take this the wrong way. No, no, no. Yeah, just have to all sign to the road there. Cliff Ramsey's son. Have you seen that photo? Yes, down, um, uh, that's down in London, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. 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 Um, now, was this was this last year or was it? Last season. It was. Yeah. I was there. Um, now, funny enough. Um, not the faces I meant to replicate the players who actually played on the Aye. And if you look at each side, both teams have autographed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, we still don't know because the lad who brought it in didn't tell us which team was which. So oh, what know? side? Right. Which is Sunderland side, which is the new Newcastle yeah. side? It's a unique one off. What's the lad's name? Oh. Oh, he actually played for the Black and Whites. 
But it was a son supporter, and he brought it in for us. Um, so yeah, so uh, on a Saturday, it's manic. People playing on there. I can it's imagine, aye. Right. Something a bit different. Cormac, uh, Nunes, <laughs> I remember that, right? Yeah. Was it that the controversial one where it was the wrong player? Yeah, allegedly. Yeah. yeah, allegedly, yeah. yeah. I remember his debut for us. Yeah, yeah. Such a small fella, but he Wasn't could jump. Yeah. Yeah. We've actually got one of his home during the international shirts. Really? Really, yeah. Um, the story behind that was when he signed, um, he was put in the lodgings or a house, book Spanish. So it could translate it for him. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, anyway, when the short time he was here, he went back home to go, went to play for the he was came back and he gave her his shirt. Oh. Um, but, yeah, just something with different. Uh -huh. uh, and the little story behind it, last year, well, before we were over, but we were moving things in, doing things, and um, the boss got a phone call from a family um to say that their dad, who was a friend of the son supporter, basically was dying of cancer. In yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't have long left. Could they bring him down one day just to see what, have a look around. So we, we sent them as you, the display was best we could for them yeah. in that day. Uh, but the day they came in, we actually had all the old magazines out on the floor and we were cutting these out to try and design the pattern for the shape of the wall. Yeah. And we had them just in where the bar is on the floor when they, and it turned out it was the guy his brother and between them they had three grown up sons so the yeah. came in you know who's your favourite players oh, I like so and so I like so and so well just pick one each well, just pick one up each and what we did was make a couple of sign oh right yeah so now they, they've been glazed over yeah um, so they're basically there for forever and we got the sad news a few months ago that the gentleman did pass away. Oh, bless him. So we've still got his signature there. Yeah. You know. Um, but it's funny when the players come in, you know, with the bare wood, we're going to clear varnish it so, and keep it. Keep the way it is, exactly yeah. the way it is. I mean, the building's a listed building. It's 172 year old uh, in this room. I just love this room. I honestly do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> everything, everything is designed around one little thing, and that one little thing is the ticket that they used to print out for you. Now, obviously, these are, these are just blank stones. Yeah, yeah. The real thing. So, that was the old fashioned railway ticket. Yeah. So, you can see all of these, they're all designed to fit the shape. You've got all the railway station destinations on there with, with South some, Shield, see them. With some of the old fares on. You know, one and eight, four pence, one and five. Hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, look, my brother would love this because he's train mad. Hi. <laughs> got all of the drawers there. Again, with all of the destinations written on. If you open the drawer, again, all the little slots, all designed around the, the, the ticket. You know, so all the tickets. Yeah. The, the whole working environment is based around that. But just to flip the thing, just, yeah, this is where I would have served you if you were buying yes. a ticket. Yes, yeah. So the money draw. Yeah, the other side of that, yeah. You know, the old money draw with the old, you know, what's left of the old balls in. We found the old pennies here, these sixpences. I bet, I, yeah. yeah. I bet you just there's still more to be found. <laughs> a little. Yeah, uh, I mean the safe's there. There's nothing in it. We we do have the key for it, um, but it was empty, unfortunately. Unfortunately, <laughs> imagine that. <laughs> That'd have been a nice present, wouldn't it? <laughs> but again, all folks from memorabilia. Uh, probably before your time, but definitely there was a little pub built into the brewery itself. Yeah. And the pub was called the Brewery, the brewery Tap. Town, yeah. So that is the sign from the building. Do you remember the gym? The gym at school? Yes, upside down, upside isn't down. it? Yeah. Yeah, there's the top. Aye. Yeah, upside down. Just fill it with all the footballs. Yeah. Some more autographed. It's made into a table as well. Yeah. It's pretty good, that, isn't it? Yeah. People sit around. We we'll get the regulars on a Saturday. There's a couple, you know, middle aged elderly couple. They come in straight away. Books. Memorabilia. Yeah. 
EastEnder. I think that was a pub down Hendon mm-hmm. somewhere. Famous old Volks lights, which used to light up. Again, the brewery tap again. God, that's an old sign, that one, definitely, isn't it? The... <laughs> Ah, it's a shame when it's like an old station like this where it didn't get used for the four years and it's like obviously for what you have done as well, it's brilliant. Well, that's now being made good. Uh-huh. That, was dis- that was in disrepair when we got the two- It was when the council had the building. It's all fenced off. Yeah. The bridge is inaccessible. Right. Because the electric cables run under the bridge. Oh, yeah. The and it's such a shame because architecturally that is the only bridge like that between London and Edinburgh. It's a lovely bridge, isn't it, when you're looking at it like that? Yeah, so, uh, but there is a long-term aim to try and get this resolved so yeah. we can get this bridge open, reopen that. I mean, you can see on, this, on the blackboards, the right is still, still there. there, aye. You know, so, uh, and the other th- silly thing is, just to the right, of the, at the end of the wall, on the right hand side, you see where the, the little fence is? Yeah, yeah. That's a public walkway, so you get straight to the match. Oh, aye, that would be, aye. You know? Yeah. Come on now. The door's open. Aye, aye, you could like, couldn't you? <laughs> Straight down there. Straight down there. That's where I've parked at the other side of that. <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes, didn't, I, sometimes when I go to the game, I get a few yeah. when I walk around that way, passing and held. Yeah. And of course, who did we play first? One of the first home games this season. Oxford. Oxford. Aye. We opened the doors at 11 o'clock. Who was first in through the door? But that family came back in again. Really? Mum, Dad, too. I said, you came in last season, didn't you? Yeah, we did. The girls smiling. Hi. He said, there, uh, oh, we've got something for you. I said, what's that? Where's your flag? And they came purposely with a badge. Got the flag. You know, just to, to put, put the pins on. Uh, yeah, which was nice. Yeah. It was nice. Uh, yeah. Can you manage? Yeah, because I had it in and I took it. Was that that little one? <laughs> yeah. Ah, well, I've had it. It's like, this is literally being a video of me just like recording all that. Not fun facing. Luke. It's absolutely awesome this. Absolutely awesome. Never I can't believe I've never been here before. <laughs> Stan, you've missed out on this like. I'd like to bring you back to this. Ian Porterfield and Montgomery. It's awesome, like all this stuff. But again, I was totally blown away when he said it's free to get in. I didn't expect it to be free. Aye, so Dan, as I was saying, this, these are all for sale. Pretty. There's loads of them. I mean, where's one of them? That's a fiver. <laughs> That's signed. Well, there you have it. And um, that was the Sunderland Fans Museum. Dan, like I say, you've totally, totally missed out there. Like, absolute brilliant experience. And a massive, massive shout out and thank you to the uh, to the fella who showed us around and gave us a guide or two of everything. You didn't have to do that. It is totally... Um, it's like it's, it's, it's a free museum to go into. There is stuff there to buy. Um, obviously, you know, to just do what they can to get to make funds so that, like, for the museum to keep it going. So, if anyone who watches this wants to go, I recommend it. If you're a massive, it doesn't have to be a Sunderland fan. If you're a massive football fan, get there because um, it's well worth it. So, thank you for watching. Please like, please subscribe, and we'll probably see you again very soon.